بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم brothers and sisters today's talk will be about chapter 1 of Quran this is not going to be an explanation of Quran there are good tafsir out there that you can refer to the whole point of this talk is to be able to understand what we read so we will talk about each chapter or just near the end inshallah and we will talk about what ties the verses together there is a purpose for each surah each verse stresses the purpose of the topic of each surah I won't read in Quran to be easier for you. You may not be able to understand each and every word, but at least you'll be able to know what the surah wants to tell you, what the surah wants you to do. This will be like an outline of the surah of Quran. Let's get started. You'll find the links you need in the description area. The first chapter of Quran is Surah Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha means the opener. Another name for this chapter is Fatiha al-Kitab, or the opener of the book. This surah is only seven verses long. It's easy to read, no tajweed rules that take time to learn, and we read this chapter in our prayers 17 times a day. Without it, the prayer doesn't count. The messenger, peace be upon him, said to one of his companions, Shall I not teach you a surah which is the greatest surah in the Quran? And then he taught him, Surah Al-Fatiha Why all this value for this chapter? Why is it called Fatiha Al-Kitab or the opener of the book? Why do we read it 17 times a day? Why our salah or prayer is not valid without it? Well, the reason is it includes the essence of our deen, our religion, which is belief, worship, and the way of life. That's what Quran as a whole talks about, belief, worship, and the way of life. Let's have a look at what this chapter reminds us of. First, our relationship with God, which is based on the mercy of God. You start the chapter by saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. This chapter also reminds us of the beautiful names of God, Asma'ullah al Husna, Ar Rahman al Rahim. These two names are repeated twice in this chapter, in verse 1 and in verse 3. We say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Then again Ar Rahmanir Rahim. This chapter also reminds us of dhikr, the mansion and remembrance of God. It also reminds us of the importance of dua. The, the first part of this surah is praising and glorifying God, and the second part is the prayer itself. This chapter also reminds us to be sincere and loyal to God. In verse 5 we say, You we worship, and you we ask for help. The verse doesn't say, We worship you. Instead it says, You we worship. And, and that structure of the sentence is called restriction. So it's like saying, We worship you only. In verse 6, it also reminds us of our goal. Our goal in this life and our goal in the afterlife. The straight path. Imagine that the straight path in the afterlife is the extension of the straight path in this life. Another thing that this chapter reminds us of and is very important is that the chapter is read as if by a group of people. You can't say you, I worship or you, I ask for help even if you are doing the prayer alone. Always remember it's not just you, it's you and the Ummah, your brothers and sisters. Every day you pray for yourself and for them to stress the importance of unity. Like in chapter 3, verse 103, And hold fast all of you together to the rope of Allah, and be not divided among yourselves. So please, if you are not talking to one of your brothers and sisters, be it a family member, a friend, a neighbor, please talk to him or her and make things better. This chapter also reminds us of who to take for our role models. In verse 7 it says, The path of those on whom you have bestowed your grace. Those are our role models. Our role models are not those who earned God's wrath or those who went astray. Who are your friends? Which group of people do you want to end up with? Something very interesting is the next two chapters, chapter 2 and chapter 3, we find examples of people who earned God's wrath and those who went astray because they disobeyed God. To wrap it up, the chapter reminds us of God's attributes. He's not Rahim, which means merciful but Rahim, which means the one who shows a lot of mercy. Also, God is the Lord of the worlds, and He is the Master of the Day of Judgment. Because of all of this, because He is worthy of it, 
This is why we only worship him and we only ask him for help. But we need his guidance to stay on the straight path. In the end of chapter 1, we ask God for guidance. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم Guide us to the straight path. In chapter 2, verse 2, it reads, This is the book, no doubt, in it, a guidance. Then the rest of the verse. You pray for guidance in the first chapter and you get the answer to your prayer in the second chapter and of course in the rest of the book. You want guidance? Here it is. That's all for today. Please read the surah again. You have the links you need in the description area. And stay tuned for next week's talk about chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.